Welcome back, everyone. It's Close Boys Games, and we're continuing the letter. Um, her lips are twisted and frown. She doesn't seem particularly happy to see me, and I'm not surprised. It wouldn't be. I almost created a scene. Mr. Wright, however. Why, if it isn't the little Lily. I trust you're feeling well now. It's Isabella, sir. Not Lily. I appreciate your concern. I'm feeling better now. I really don't understand why they can't get my name right. It's a fairly common name, and it shouldn't be too hard to remember. Regardless, I hand him... I believe I can take that. Name. Thank you very much. With how elegantly she plucks the papers off my hands, it's easy to think that there isn't any traces of irritation in her. But it is there, radiating in her stiff stance, and the way she's standing at a fair distance from her husband, how the two look to be ignoring each other. Seeing the scene, it soon becomes clear to me that I'm the only one who has put her in a bad mood. Did they fight, hmm? Most probably. I've seen it happen dozens of times with my previous clients. It's a shame, especially if they're new mansion. I never did like it when my own mama and papa fought. Fight. I hope they'll make up soon. <laughs> Apparently satisfied with what she's seen, Bam and Hammer claps her hand together before extending it to us for a shake. Rose and I release the breath we've been holding. That settles it then? Uh, are you really sure about this property, ma'am? We could easily find you a bigger one among our current listings. Something with a modern touch? Something not haunted, perhaps. Rose shoots me a warning glance. The clear says, don't make a scene, we're almost there. Of course, why wouldn't I be? The house is absolutely perfect, isn't it, darling? A helipad would still be a nice addition. <laughs> yes, well, we'll get there eventually, love. As I was saying, if your partner had the documents yesterday, we would have bought it right there immediately. Shame she didn't have it. Well, there's still a few necessary documents we need you to sign after, but we'll let you know once we have those finalized. We'll be handling the process for the rest, so don't worry about it, ma'am. Within a week, I hope. We still have a housewarming party to plan, after all. You know how much thought to be put into those things. There are servants for that, darling. Love, servants or not, you're going to make people listen to your input nonetheless. Yeah, let's see. No more than a week, ma'am. Barring unexpected delay, of course. You can leave it to us. Excellent. Well then, I'll leave you two to it. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. Oh, and before we forget... She discreetly folds something into both our hands and winks, a finger raised to her lips, demanding our silence. What happened the day before was quite... unfortunate. But you did get us what we wanted in the end. That, at the very least, is commendable. But this is... Ma'am, I can't accept this. Don't you worry, darling. It's a small thing coming from us. Bougie. Consider this your bonus for a job well done. Mm. 
She smiled sweetly like this is simply the most normal thing to do in the world. Oh, before I forget, my lovely interior designer would appreciate it if you hand her a copy of the floor plan as soon as possible. She's dying to work on the house. You can do that, yes? Here's her contact. C certainly, ma'am. We'll have it processed as soon as possible. I knew I could count on you lovelies. I hope to see you too soon so we can get this closed. Just that like? Just like that. Transactions over and done with. My mind's still reeling even after they've left. Other agents would kill to have clients like them. Part of me feels lucky about the fact no lengthy negotiations, no sudden change of minds, just talk, signatures, a few handshakes here and there, and we're done. The other part. A second ago. We sold a haunted property to two innocent clients. Sure, the commission's big. Big enough to continue funding Papa's treatment and hospitalization. You want a full reference, Big enough to pay for all four of my younger siblings' schooling. Heck, it'll keep me away from instant noodle diet for months. I don't have to go back to the mansion. As well as once the deal has been closed, much of my Sandy's relief. But knowing that something's in there, and we give it to the good couple, um, Despite that. Oh, Isabella, the things you do to sell a house and get money. Papa won't be happy with that. At least I should have good news to tell next time I call him. The little lie I told Mama this morning isn't a lie anymore. Well, the something. So how does it feel? How does what feel? Your first big multi-million pound sale, silly. I know you've been with us for years, but this has got to be memorable for you. Memorable is an understatement, Rose. Come on, show some enthusiasm. They gave us a bonus too, aside from the commission and the other bonus boss promised. What are you going to do with it? Uh, I don't know. Send it home, probably? All of it? Not everything, of course. Most of it. I'll leave some for my living expenses. Listen here, Isabella. I'll teach you something I should have told you before we ended your training. She slings an arm over my shoulder and leans in closer to my ear, as though she's about to share a big secret. It's okay to celebrate from time to time. I don't get it. It's simple. Go out, do something for yourself. Throw a party and treat your friends to free food. Didn't you say the last one's some sort of tradition back at home for you? Hello, this is practically a done deal. Uh, isn't throwing a party a bit excessive? Your call. I won't say no to an invitation, by the way, in case you really are planning to throw one. A few drinks would be nice, too. Thank you very much. I don't think my apartment's big enough for that. You could always move? Bloody hell, you're working in real estate. I think I'll pass. That's too much of an unnecessary expense for me. <laughs> but I did promise Becca free lunch in case the sale goes well.
You go do that. Hold on a sec. She quickly removes herself for me to answer the phone on her desk. Her tone shifts from playful to professional in a span of a few seconds. Today? Not a problem, ma'am. I could bring you a copy of the contract if... <laughs> Must be another client. Nothing surprising there. She's one of the BCU's top agents, no matter how modest she appears. A saleswoman through and through. I, on the other hand, have very little knack for it. Of course, I learned eventually I had to. But someone else will, without a doubt, do a better job. Once, though, when a drunken stupor, or stupor, Rose told me a story of what could have been. Years ago, wide-eyed, young, and brimming with yet-to-be fulfilled dreams and ambitions, she was a term or two away from a nursing degree. Out of courtesy, I never pressed on the matter further. But perhaps it's where the sense of foulness started. A small connection due to one similar experience in our respective lives and goals, we both let it let, both let pass us by because of circumstances we're in. I'd be happy to discuss this over tea, ma'am. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. New client? Reassigned. Have you heard from Mark and all? Not since the first visit to the mansion. Why? No news from the HR yet? None at all. Boss thinks he ran away. I doubt it, though. He's too much of a wimp for that. There must be another reason. <sighs> Who knows? Anyway, I've got to meet this one. I'll see you later. She throws a wave over her shoulder as she rushes out of the office. Lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of a fellow agents also heading out for a much needed break. Ordinarily, there's no need for me to go out, but oversleeping didn't allow me the luxury of packing my own lunch today. If one considers taking an instant noodle cup from my pantry packing your lunch, I'm trying to make good on the promise I made to Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zach and Ash too. In the end, only Becca and Zach could come. Ash, on the other hand, couldn't be reached. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. He's at it again, right here today, gone the next day. Oh well, his lost. We have agreed to meet at a nearby cafe, the same one I frequent with Becca, because it's cheap and they give away free bread around closing time. Quaint and old, quaint, a little old-fashioned though, looks a wee bit out of place amidst the city's tall buildings, but we love it all the same. Much like its facade, uh, facade, the interior carries an antique charm to it. Vintage art piece, uh, pieces and a row of shelves boasting an extensive collection of books cover the walls. It would have been nice to hang out here for hours on end, but even on a weekend, the place is still packed with people. Thankfully, Becca and Zach have arrived for already found seats and are engaged in some casual chatter before I arrive. It's strange seeing the two of them without Ash accompany the other. They've never been particularly close. Sure, they talk when they meet, laugh at the same things when that's when there's something funny, but there's distance, the kind born purely out of differing interests. That or Zach's simply afraid of Becca. It's not impossible, and I won't blame him if he is. He might be the tallest in a group, but everyone knows that it means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I am a little scared of her. Zach! Becca! Well, you seem to be in a better mood today. What happened? I know that smile, Belle. Come on, still! D don't rush me! 
Let's order food first, okay? A waitress comes by to take our order. On a normal day, me and Becca will order a heavy, hearty serving of, our, of their special vegetarian stoves. Zach takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. But today is a good day. Great even. It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Today's special. For the three of us. Even the person drawing down our order looks surprised at today's meal choice. She writes it nonetheless and leaves without a comment. Becca furthers her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose what's likely a string of reprimands. Don't worry, it's my treat. The glare she sends my way reminds me of, of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my younger brother 18 years ago. Naturally, I never did it again after she promised me to apologize the next day. But Becca's far from being my mom. Well, she sure wants to act like it. A small sheepish grin is enough to turn that frown into a defeated sigh. Food arrives in the middle of a funny story from Zach, putting the rest of, a, of the conversation on hold as we are each served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Pan roasted sea bass with circus dressed asparagus and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side. Or at least that's what the daily special board says. I never did pay any attention to it whenever I came here, since they price whatever's written way above what I'm willing to spend on food on a single day. Oh good. I'm so hungry I think I'm dying. You're always hungry. Hey! Not all the time. Let me guess, you skipped breakfast again. Not on purpose. I may have overslept by a few seconds today. Right then. Stop stalling, Isabella. What's this about? Let us say, Rebecca. She wouldn't be inviting us out if it wasn't worth hearing out. Well, we're waiting. I'm treating you guys to a once in a century thing. An expectant grin breaks out on my face, except... I I'm sorry, say that again! And this is important because... Becca only raises an eyebrow at me while Zach appears like he didn't get the punchline to another flame joke Ash made and is desperately searching for someone to explain it. Maybe I should rephrase it. Okay, what do we do? Guess what, guys? I'm paying! I sold the house! As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more like it. You heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. As of today, I, Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos, am free from my instant noodle binge. Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yep. Which house is this? In Aslam Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, that's... She let her hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who has heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Did you think we wouldn't be able to sell it? Have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? You don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I could stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat and judging from the looks on their faces it seems they are too. Me and my stupid mouth. I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But uh, don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? The open house only started yesterday, and now you already have a buyer? It happens from time to time. Yeah, but look, I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, 
You have something. W what if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know? They're a fraud, or they suddenly back out? Isn't it a little too early to celebrate? Gosh, you're such a downer, Becca. Rebecca does have a point, Bella. If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. Mm, they don't seem like it to me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it more like. But I'm not going to tell Becca about that, knowing she'd only worry. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... As in, it's why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. So don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. Like, that's worse than me trying to do accents, come on. You don't really think they'd believe that, do you? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious in this day and age, Belle. Oh, well, there's you. Right. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. I begin to gather their plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. A laugh almost escapes her mouth with the way Zach's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Becca's hand interrupts me just as I'm about to pull her plate closer to me. <laughs> I'm kidding! Don't go all pouty on me again! I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I'm sure he's gonna be fine now though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Mama said this morning he's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people, even those who have known you long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. A laugh there, a playful job there but most of it is spent on catching up and telling stories about whatever is keeping us busy these days. Something we couldn't afford to do the, the day before, taking into account what happened. Even Becca's surprisingly chatter, chatty, is there something in the sea bass we ate? Zach, though, appears less energetic. While he's far from being the life of a party, He's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. Apart from a few in inputs, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices... Are you sure you're not feeling under the weather, Zachary? Huh? W no, I I'm okay. No, no worries, Rebecca. Doesn't sound okay to me. It's... It's, it's okay. I might be feeling a little bummed out today, but, but I'm, I'm sure this will pass. Is it about the reviews this morning? The pained expression crosses Zach's face, and almost immediately Becca retreats in her inquiry as though the man's look is enough to answer, uh, for an answer to her. I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? Did I stumble on a big secret? This is why I don't like waking up late. You heard about those, huh? Sorry, I just happened to check on some sites this morning. No, nah, no, nah, it's it's it, it's a very sensitive topic in the first place. I, I should have expected it. What reviews? Becca glances at Zach. Her motion's unsure, eyes asking for consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. With Zach, it has always been better to wait, let him speak on his own. 
Becca too, to some extent, although with her expressions, explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulders, gesturing for her to go on with a tilt of his head. It's his movie. That doesn't explain anything. Stop dangling the information, Becca! Zachary, I'm not the one supposed to be telling her about this. It's still your documentary. Is it something bad? Not bad, per se. You, you, you guys don't need to dwell on it much. Bad? Listen here! I wouldn't trivialize what those bowheads wrote if I were you. They're ruining other people's jobs. From how her tone raises in anger, it seems that she's the one slighted in that sack. <laughs> the sicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down as soon as she sends me a hard look. This isn't a laughing matter, Isabella. Some bow bag just insulted him. Calm down, Rebecca. Those are just reviews, and it happens a lot. I do not kin about you two, but calling the entire film an out-and-out -out drivel, you're better off watching an educational kids' TV show, and worst one and a half hour of my life, among other things, isn't exactly a critique any decent movie reviewer would say. <laughs> if you could call that a critique, did we even watch the same film? Well, maybe I ain't cut out for it. Better stick with my photography or something. If nothing else, this helped me open my eyes to what I can and can't do. You're giving up. Okay, guys, this is going way past, and I gotta edit this, and I can only upload so long a video because of my internet and computer and everything else. Anyway, in the meantime, may the Lord bless you, may keep you in his face, and upon you give you peace. You guys have a good night, and until next time. Stay spoopy, stay happy, and um, don't let critics get to you. I know, a slap from Zach. Okay, bye guys. Being random. Bye.